All right, we're going to go ahead and call, let me make sure this is positioned correctly. We're gonna go ahead and call the January 10th meeting of the Lansing City Council uh, to order. Let the record reflect a starting time of 7.03. I wanna remind folks based on recommendations from the CDC, uh, the City Council is still requesting that folks wear uh, while they're in the chambers, uh, masks to ensure the safety uh, of all. And as a public school teacher that wears this thing all day, every day, I certainly understand um, that it is, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're over this, uh, so to speak, uh, but we certainly appreciate um, everything you all have done um, as you come into these chambers to make sure that everybody, particularly our most vulnerable, um, stay safe. So thanks again. Uh, that being said, Clerk Swope, would you please take the roll? Certainly, Council Member Betts. Council Member Betts is absent. Council Member Brown. Uh, present. Council Member Garza. Here. Council Member Hussein. Here. Council Member Jackson. Here. Council Member Spadafore. Present. Council Member Spitzley. Here. Council Member Wood. Here. There are seven members present to quorum. That brings us to the meditation and pledge of allegiance. Is there anyone at the dais that uh, would like anybody to be uh, remembered during a moment of meditation and reflection? The only hand up I see is Councilwoman Wood. Thank you, uh, President Hussein. Uh, we lost uh, another neighborhood leader um, this past week. Betty Dreyer was a mainstay in the Baker Denora neighborhood. Uh, Betty grew up in that neighborhood and served that neighborhood as a mentor, um, a neighborhood advocate. Uh, she worked tirelessly to make a difference in the Baker Denora neighborhood. Um, Betty uh, could be seen going door to door with the community police officer, introducing them to um, neighbors so that they would know who was patrolling their streets. You would often find Betty uh, delivering food to those that needed it, uh, taking people to the doctors, um, to the grocery store, uh, taking gift baskets to those that were sick, or whether it was a holiday, uh, making gift baskets to let people know that they were remembered. Um, Betty had a long battle with um, cancer, and um, in her passing, um, she made it clear that she did not want to have a funeral or a memorial service. What she wanted was her neighbors and the people in the community, they so chose to make a donation to the Lansing Police Department to the Problem Solving Fund. Uh, that donation um, check can be written to the Lansing Police Department problem solving. And if you put Betty Dreyer's name in the memo, and that can be sent to 120 West Michigan Avenue, 48933. So if we could remember Betty and her family um, tonight, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Oh, I did forget to mention she was a fire commissioner and the people at the um, fire department. She was somebody that was dependable. She was at graduation. She was at promotion. She was, she was there relentlessly um, promoting the Lansing Fire Department as well. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Shore. I don't know if this is the proper time to do this, but I, I want to um, thank Councilwoman Wood for that. Um, Betty is a is a very good friend. I know to all of us, but I know Councilwoman Wood certainly is the um, the senior uh, member here. So I, I do appreciate that, uh, Councilwoman Wood. Betty is a is a good friend. I posted my thoughts, and Councilman Council President Hussein. Um, I know you saw it. I posted my thoughts on social media. But Betty is a it's a loss for the neighborhoods. It's a loss for the city. It's a loss for each one of us. As I know, she was a friend to each one of us. So I was I was pretty broken up by that, knowing that she had been sick, but not that sick. Um, and uh, my thoughts go out to her, to everyone who loved her. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's fully appropriate. And I'd, I'd add too, um, although, you know, when we talk about Betty, we often talk about the work that she did um, in the Baker to Nora area. Uh, she really did have a heart for the entire city. Um, and she served as a mentor to so many of us. Um, myself, dating back to when I was on the uh, Lansing Park Board, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. Um, and she's uh, one of the reasons I decided to, one of the many uh, people and, and reasons and that I decided to, uh, to run for uh, city council. 
And so I certainly appreciated the opportunity to be uh, counseled by Betty and, and to learn from Betty uh, in terms of what public service really is about. Uh, that being said, I'm not seeing anyone else, so if you would please rise and join us in a, a moment of meditation, we'd appreciate it. You have for your approval the printed council proceedings of January 3rd. Vice President Wood. Thank you, President Hussein. At this time, I would move the minutes of January 3rd as written. All right, there is a motion on the floor. Is there further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And we are to consideration of late items, and I understand we do have late items this evening. Vice President Wood. Uh, thank you, um, President Hussein. At this time, I would move uh, for the consideration to suspend rule number nine um, so that we can consider uh, late items. There are two late items that we would be dealing with under um, action items. One is the resignation of Council Member uh, Betts from the First Ward, and the second is the process being um, set a, determined uh, for the replacement. So with that, I would move to suspend the rules. There is a motion on the floor. Is there further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, we are to um, special ceremonies and presentations. Our first special ceremony is a tribute and recognition of Pastor Melvin T. Jones upon his retirement. And my understanding is Councilwoman Spitzley is going to take this on. So Councilwoman Spitzley, you have the floor. Oh, and Mayor Shore as well. Fantastic. <laughs> oh no, hold on.
Thank you so much. There is a resolution, or I'm sorry, a motion uh, to approve a resolution on the floor. Is there further discussion? Seeing and hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Passes. And si can, I, can I step in just for a moment, folks? I'm so sorry. I am getting messages that the floor mic uh, is not working. So if we could get if we could get City TV on that, we'd certainly appreciate it. <laughs> I, I'm, I go down 69 to Pensacola. That's all I'm telling you. <laughs> okay. So we, we, we want just a token of our appreciation for you guys and, and all the stuff you've done in the city. My, my son meant, wanted me to tell you, you know, that hello, and you were his music teacher. And so when I was telling him I was doing this, he was like, oh, I'm coming. No, I said hello. So hello. Um, so we wanted to wish you this, and, and thank you so much. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. I get to give you this one too. I will. I will. I will mention that my wife did tell me to say hi as well. And that she's going to miss your, your sermons at the First Pres. Whenever you show up at First Pres, they, uh, they're going to miss you quite a bit. All right. Thank you so much. Do you want to say a few words? Like, yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, please step up to the mic. Appreciate you being here. Absolutely. Congratulations. Yeah. Well, I guess I'll go before my uh, husband. It's been an absolute privilege to serve in the Lansing School District um, for over 22 years. Um, and it's been a privilege to be at Union, of course, for 37 years, to develop um, 
a puppet ministry that has gone international as well as national. And to be able to share with so many in the Lansing community, as we were coming down, I looked over at the Capitol <laughs> and I remembered our, my babies, that's what I called them. <laughs> I remember my babies taking my band over there and we played right in front of the Capitol. We played here in the chamber um, for Martin Luther King's celebrations. And so truly Lansing is home for us. Even though we may be getting closer to our children, which is our reason for going to Alabaster, Alabama, um, our hearts will still be here, not just with you, the community, but more than that, with the children for me, because we are nothing if we don't really have our little ones to bring up to be at the best that they could be. Thank you for honoring my husband. Thank you for bringing me along with it. <laughs> but most of all, thank you for being you. Thank you for the service that you give. Because truly, without those who would give the service, where would we be? God bless you, and we love you. <laughs> I often uh, dread my wife having remarks first because she always does a better job than I do. <laughs> Uh, I believe I first got involved with city life under Dick Letts. And uh, I recall uh, becoming president of the Human Relations Department here in the city, which acquainted me with a number of city leaders. And from that point, I've had a very meaningful relationship with the city. And I am deeply honored to be honored by the city for uh, the labor of love over these many, many years. I am humbled and appreciative of this acknowledgement, and I will hold it uh, dear. Uh, I do, however, think that uh, the weather is better in Alabaster, <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> And uh, we were fortunate to uh, purchase a very nice home there. And uh, we're looking forward to time with family. And of course, uh, I have uh, grandkids. And uh, they, are, they are waiting. They have been all over the house down there and uh, helping us get prepared for um, the move. Let me share uh, this insight with you. Uh, you. You don't like moving after 37 years when you have some, uh, some of your things, some of your children's things, all of those things in the house that need to be sorted through before you move. It's not, well, I hope you get the message. Uh, uh, Mayor, uh, it's been my honor and pleasure to work with you. Uh, I have found you to be uh, sincere and honorable and well-intentioned as a leader of the city, and I am glad to have had the uh, opportunity uh, to work hand-in-hand -hand with you on a number of issues. And again, to the members of City Council, uh, thank you uh, for this honor. It is deeply appreciated. Vice President Wood. Uh, I just wanted to add to the comments that uh, Council Member Spitzley said. Um, we are definitely going to miss uh, Reverend Jones and um, the First Lady and their advocacy in the community. Um, those of us that have had the opportunity to listen to him preach, we will miss that. But I think the thing I will miss the most is his voice. Uh, those of us that have been there when he has sung, um, it has touched our soul. So um, that, that too, we will, we will miss that voice. So thank you very much. Other council member comments? All right, seeing none, thank you. Oh, sorry, Councilwoman Spitzley. All I, all I can say is you, you, you told me where you live, so it's over. I, I heard it. 
Peter let me know too, so I wrote it down. So. All righty then. There you go. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, now uh, we will have the reading of committee assignments into the record by President Hussein. Sure. So Vice President Wood and myself uh, met uh, after last Monday's meeting. Uh, we have talked to uh, everybody um, as part of this body, uh, and we really, you know, we worked hard this year to ensure that with regard to uh, committee structure, that we had strong, sound committee structure, um, leadership that we believed would empower. Uh, we wanted some measure of continuity on these committees, um, but we also wanted to give uh, some folks an opportunity uh, to serve maybe in some arenas where they have not yet uh, had an opportunity to serve. And so I hope we were able to achieve that. Uh, and at this point, I will read uh, the committee assignments, uh, including uh, chair, vice chair, and member at large into the record. Um, first, we have the Committee on Public Safety. Uh, Carol Wood will be the chair. Adam Hussein, myself, will be the vice chair. And Jeffrey Brown will be a member. In terms of the Committee on Equity, Diversity, Inclu and, and Inclusion, sorry, uh, Brian T. Jackson will be the chair. Jeffrey Brown will be the vice chair. And myself, Adam Hussein, will be a member. Uh, with regards to the Committee on City Operations, Patricia Spitzley will be the chair. Peter Spadafor will be uh, the vice chair, uh, and myself will be, um, Adam Hussein will be a member. The Committee on Development and Planning, we will have Jeremy Garza as chair, Patricia Spitzley as vice chair, and Brian T. Jackson as a member. Uh, with regard to the Committee on Ways and Means, uh, Peter Spadafor will be the chair, Jeremy Garza will be the vice chair, and Carol Wood will be a member. Uh, our ad hoc audit committee will continue uh, in its role this year uh, with quarterly meetings. The chair uh, will continue to be Peter Spadafore, and the vice chair will continue to be uh, Carol Wood. Um, and then, with regards to council rules, we do have a committee on personnel, um, and the rules actually dictate the, the structure, essentially, of that committee. Uh, Carol Wood will serve as chair. I, Adam Hussein, will serve as vice chair. Peter Spadafore will serve as a member, as well as Brian T. Jackson. We also have a number of outside boards and agencies that we have to appoint members to. I will read those appointments into the record as well. For the Capital Area Michigan Works Administrative Board, uh, we need three members. Uh, those members will be Council Members Hussein, Brown, and Spitzley. For the Capital Region Airport Authority, uh, we have one appointment to that particular authority. Council Member Spadafore uh, will be that member. For the City of Lansing and Charter Township of Lansing Liaison Commission, uh, we again have one um, position with regard to that commission, and that will be Council Member Jackson. We also have one uh, position uh, with regard to the Community Correction Advisory Board, that also will be Council Member Jackson. Um, as it pertains to Downtown Lansing, Inc., uh, the representative will, uh, from this body will be Council Member Spitzley. Uh, with regards to the uh, Employee Retirement Board, our representative will be Council Member Garza. With regard to the Police and Fire uh, Retirement Committee, um, or board, sorry, our representative will be Council Member Wood. With regard to the Greater Lansing Convention and Visitor Bureau, uh, this is a liaison position. Our representative will be Council Member Wood. Uh, as it pertains to the Lansing Entertainment and Public Facilities Authority, uh, our member, our representative, sorry, will be Council Member Garza. With regard to the Planning Board, typically what we do is we pull individuals from the Economic Development and Planning Committee. We have Council Members Garza and Jackson uh, representing this body as part of the Planning Board. Uh, in terms of Tri-County on Aging Consortium Board, we have two members that we need to appoint. Uh, those members will be Council Member Spitzley and myself. And then for the Tri-County Regional Planning Commission, we have three members that we need to appoint, um, and those members will be Council Member Spadafore, Brown, and then City Clerk Swope. Are there any questions, comments? Let me just tell you that I really appreciate, oh, sorry, Vice President Wood. I'm not gonna read that, read that. yeah. Um, I, I, this was actually a really, really um, easy process. Um, in, in talking to you all, I um, certainly appreciate um, the ability to, uh, you know, shake things up just a little bit, get some folks into some, some positions where uh, maybe they uh, weren't comfortable, um, you know, at the outset, or maybe they didn't have, um, you know, uh, past experience. Um, the other piece is there were, um, you know, particularly with the outside boards and agencies, there were folks that, um, 
you know, quite a few folks that wanted to be on some of the same boards and agencies. Uh, and when I came to uh, members of this uh, particular body uh, to let, you know, folks know that more than one had jumped in, uh, folks were willing to step back and allow somebody uh, the opportunity to step in where maybe they haven't had that opportunity before. So I just really want to say uh, how much I appreciate uh, you all coordinating with uh, Vice President Wood and myself so we could get these set. Um, with, it, it just was not a contentious situation, which we really appreciate. Um, we have tonight, I'm going to go ahead and add, actually, um, I'm going to pull it up real quick. I'm going to add an additional uh, presentation. And I do believe that we have Parks Director Brett Kaczynski in the gallery. Brett, if you, if you wouldn't mind coming on down, we're going to actually invite you into the gallery. We're going to ask that you sit at the, uh, the table uh, right here. We know that the mic is working. Um, we, have, um, we were actually alerted uh, to a situation last week um, with regard to some lights being taken out of both Regent uh, and Bancroft Parks. Uh, and so Vice President Wood, myself, other members of this body, uh, we engaged um, uh, in, at quite a high frequency, quite, frank, uh, quite frankly, at the end of last week and into the weekend, um, our administration uh, with regards to this. Um, and so we wanted to uh, have a presentation um, on uh, decisions that were made, uh, what went into those decisions. And I also wanted, because I know a number of people in the gallery um, are here to speak to this particular issue. I wanted to, to have this on the agenda as a presentation so that those folks that are here to speak to this issue uh, will actually have the opportunity now uh, as part of the first public comment tonight uh, when uh, folks are actually addressing legislative matters, okay? Um, so, Mr. Kuczynski, I'm going to go ahead and turn the floor over to you uh, with regards to the lights in Regent and Bancroft Park. Thank you. So at Bancroft Park, um, there are a couple of loops there. Um, a couple of years back, meaning probably five now, uh, we eliminated vehicle traffic from the lower loop or the southern loop there at Bancroft Park. There were lights that went throughout this area. There were also lights in the area that we used to flood for an ice skating rink. All total, this is about 15 lights in that area. We will be keeping the lights uh, that are by the building. Uh, for building code, we will also keep them in the parking area, which is right near the entrance, right near the building or warming house as well. Um, so again, that when we eliminated that vehicle traffic through there, uh, we did not remove the lights at that time, uh, and those were the lights that we removed at this time. With regards to Regent Park, uh, again, we are not eliminating all of the lights from Regent Park. There were uh, three poles in there. We are keeping the one that is by the playground and in closest view to the, uh, to the street there, which is Elizabeth Street. Um, so as far as uh, the reasons for that, um, Bancroft Park, as you know, is a very heavily wooded area with a lot of very mature trees. Um, we have had situations in other parks like this, I think you can remember at Moore's Park here most recently, where there was discussion about um, power lines in the areas of the park and removal of trees or heavily trimmed trees to allow for the power lines there. Uh, we had a similar situation at Fenner uh, on the east side of Fenner, near where it butts up against um, Evergreen Cemetery. We have a building, storage building, at Evergreen Cemetery. Um, a wide swath of land was cleared in that area to allow for that power back to the building. Um, these are situations that I did not feel that we needed those lights in Bancroft Park. Uh, on that loop because we are not allowing vehicle traffic back there. Uh, we do have park hours there of dawn till dusk. And when you have a situation where you have power lines and the mature trees, knowing that you have what's called a blue sky uh, approach, meaning all limbs above those power lines uh, can be removed, that presents an issue to us in those forested areas. Um, so many of these lights in both Bancroft and Regent uh, were not operational. Were not operational for a number of years. How many? I do not know. Um, but they were not 
were not in operation, all of those lights at both of those parks. So this has, um, and this has created a number of questions from folks uh, and statements. Statements such as, we are removing all lights in all parks. That is not true. Um, we have removed park lights in some of the lights in these two parks, but that is it. We are not removing all lights in all parks. Um, it has also led to, we are removing these lights to sell parkland and to sell these specific parks. That is not true. And I can go through all of the steps for park sale, um, but I think we all know that and the process that it takes for that. Um, we are keeping, again, the lights by the playground there at Regent and around the buildings and parking area at Bancroft. Regent Park does not have a parking area. Um, and again, off Elizabeth Street there is what we want to see as far as the playground area there. Um, other things that have come up is that where, where we like to put lights in parks is by our parking areas and by our buildings for building safety code. Uh, when we're talking about the wooded areas and the forested areas with regards to our power lines that go through there, it is not a good situation when we have to trim back or remove trees for those power in that area. We are not looking to light the field at Bancroft as we no longer have skating there. Uh, and so these were really the decisions that were made for removal of those lights. Um, this was in no way an effort that we are doing in every park. In fact, different parks, depending on the area, we are replacing lights in certain parking lots, in certain areas. Uh, we are changing those out. Um, we are changing those out for energy efficient reasons. We are changing those out for security reasons um, based on calls, et cetera, and comments that you guys have received uh, with regards to situations. Uh, the most recent being the parking lot at Moore's Park at the dam. Um, so those are the situations that we have. There's been a lot out there, again, as far as um, sale of parkland because of this, there's been a lot out there about uh, doing this in all of the parks, and that is just not factual. Uh, there's also been rumors out there about us removing the uh, warming house at Bancroft. That is not factual either. Um, and in fact, I think the next step for that building is to replace the roof there. Um, so those are what I had pending any questions from council. We have any questions or comments from council? Vice President Wood. Just a couple because I do see that there is on the agenda a letter from Nancy Malo um, and this has been referred to the Public Safety uh, Committee so this will be taken up um, there as well. But the two questions I have for you Brett is one, um, did you have a conversation with LPD in making this decision? And two, did you reach out to the Friends of Bancroft um, or the neighborhood organization? So regarding the um, LPD, we did have a conversation with LPD um, based on number of calls, et cetera, that have taken place uh, in those areas and, and uh, surrounding those parks. Uh, we did not reach out to either Eastside Neighborhood Organization or to the Friends of Bancroft in regards to the removal of the uh, old infrastructure there. All right, I, I won't belabor the point here. Um, uh, again, this is something that we will take up in public safety um, as well. Thank you. Are there other council comments or questions? Seeing none. We really appreciate you being here tonight, Brett. Thank you. Okay, we are two comments by council members on the city clerk. Do we have any council member comments? Uh, council member Spadafore? Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just wanted to really quick 
touch, uh, touch on a point. A former member of this body contacted me over uh, the holidays to wanted to make sure to express his thanks and appreciation for firefighters Green, Darkus, Castillo, Scott, and Hansen from the Grand Avenue Fire Station. You all know Charlie Kramer. Uh, his son injured his finger pretty badly on Christmas, and by the time they got to urgent care, it was closed, and the swelling had gotten pretty bad, so they stopped by the fire station, and the folks there were able to help him out. So he wanted me to make sure that they were recognized at council this evening, so I'm doing that for Charlie, and as well as for firefighters Green, Darkus, Castillo, Scott, and Hansen. Uh, thank you for your service to our residents and city. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Jackson. Thank you, Mr. President. Just want to make a comment about our current COVID fatigue that we probably are all facing. This is year three of the pandemic, but people are still dying at a high rate. And as I was lounging Sunday when uh, Councilman Hussein called me about a different thing. I was watching World War II stuff and it was like the Battle of Okinawa, a thousand people and how horrible it was for the public and everything and all these battles that killed so many people. But we're still, people are dying that often every few days in our country still. So it's still very real. And I know we got vaccines, but as a parent who has a six-year-old who just got her second shot, and my son, who's three, he can't get any shots. It's just still scary for, for the people because not everybody has a choice to get the vaccine or not, which I would still encourage everybody to do that. Um, and then kind of on that same note, if we could, and I know it's possible, to have a hybrid model so that people can still participate by Zoom, we do it in the courts where we're in person and there's still like a victim or somebody who wants to speak they're still on the screen speaking and everybody can hear them. And there's a person who can control where they come in and out. I know it's possible. So it should be a goal of ours to do that. Even though there's a lot of people here today, um, it's really you know not been that many people. And I wonder what the turnout would be as far as participation if we had that option available. And we just owe it to try to make that happen, I think. So those are my comments. Thank you so much, Councilwoman Spitzley. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, and I, and I, just so you don't think I'm ambushing the mayor, I did talk to him before we broke for um, break um, and said I was going to mention it. Um, but we, you know, we're, we're experiencing some extreme cold weather these last few days. And, you know, we, we need to, one of the things that I wanted to um, have a discussion about is our policy on warming centers in the city of Lansing. Do we have a policy um, where we open up our um, community centers or things? I know that there there was an article in Lansing State Journal about various other places, and I did ask Mr. Funkhauser about warming centers at CATA, but I do believe that as a city, we should have, um, we should also be participating. And so I would ask if at some point we could have um, a presentation on, you know, um, what, it, what a po our policy is on how cold does it have to be to activate some sort of um, alert for warming? Do we have a list of warming centers? And if we do, um, can we um, figure out a way to let people know about them, put them on the internet? Um, put them on our web page, um, maybe, you know, on our public service page so that folks can know where they can go during the day um, when it's cold and, and even at night if there are resources, and I know there are shelters and resources, I, I understand that, um, but if we can make that maybe a, a button at this point because it's so cold on our website so that people can, you know, have um, that information of where they can go during those cold days, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other council member comments? Vice President Wood. Just want to remind those that are present with us, if you are here and we're going to speak on the uh, lights at Bancroft or Regent Park, um, you can sign up on the blue sheet and speak at the beginning of the council meeting. We appreciate that. Clerk's vote. Uh, thank you, um, President Hussein. Got to get used to saying that. Um, we will. Um, I, I first want to welcome our new intern for this 
term, Jessica Behrens, if you want to stand up and wave. She'll be helping us for the next several months uh, with people getting uh, filled out, uh, signed up to speak uh, regarding uh, legislative and other city government related matters and otherwise helping our office in the preparation of the city council agendas and minutes. So let's welcome Jessica Behrens, uh, senior at Michigan State University. Um, and with that, uh, we are to com community event announcements. If there's anyone in the audience with a community event, we'll give you one minute to tell us the details of your community event. And seeing no one jumping up, I'll go ahead to uh, speaker registration for public comment on legislative matters. Legislative matters uh, includes the uh, well, first off, there is a show cause hearing. So if you are the property owner at 4108 Deerfield and wish to speak, please fill out a green form. And then legislative matters includes items five through 20 on the agenda, items five through 20. And uh, we will be picking the, taking, we already have several, we will be taking any final ones within the next two minutes. And with that, we are to the mayor's comments. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'll start out, uh, Patricia, or Councilwoman Spitzley did um, alert me that she was gonna be asking the question. I do appreciate that. Um, I'm happy to, to have some folks come. The answer is that um, uh, weather emergencies and things like that go through our, uh, our emergency management department and the fire department. They evaluate uh, weather determining when there'll be an upcoming weather emergency. Um, they use a whole variety of factors they declare weather emergencies based on, on the advice of meteorological experts. They look, at, um, a, they look at temperature, wind chill, duration, dew point, and a variety of other things and how they interrelate. And they take each situation on a case-by-case -case basis. So there's not one specific metric that they use. Um, just so folks know, and, and we are working through the, the list as was suggested, um, there are a variety of places that people can go during the day. Um, the, the library, Advent House, uh, CATA, which you, which you heard about today, um, they're open um, after hours. We know that there are emergency shelters. Um, we, we're working on putting together a list of, um, of places that people can go if the weather's too cold or too hot. Um, unfortunately, a lot of times that list includes uh, like big box stores, your Meyer stores and Kroger stores and others that are open 24 hours and now with COVID, Many of those stores don't want more people in their stores, so we've had a lot of stores opt out because of COVID. So we're, we're certainly going to work on putting together that list. Uh, HRCS is working on more day shelter and warming centers as well. So um, we are working through that. Um, I'm meeting with our emergency management folks uh, this week or early next week to further discuss this and, and what options. And then certainly we do look at options such as um, community centers and other things. Um, certainly opening community centers at night can be difficult because of, of staffing, um, and we may not have staff to do it. Um, and then um, I'm, I'm always hesitant to take a community center offline during the day because, of course, we're seeing um, violence and other things where we need these, these centers open for programming for our kids and, and for others. So um, we are certainly working through that list um, but the, the, the policy, I guess, is based on a variety of metrics. So we're happy to, to get that information, provide you know, whatever you need, have emergency management come in and, and, uh, and discuss that with council. So um, thank you, Councilwoman Spitzley, um, and we'll, we'll get on that too. Um, in terms of other things, uh, I wanted to mention a few issues just for folks here to know. I had a good conversation with Councilwoman Wood. Um, for council to know um, the, the Eaton County Board of Commissioners is considering um, an ordinance that will allow uh, ORVs, off-road vehicles, to drive on county roads. Um, I have expressed my very serious concern and opposition to this. Um, we have seen, I mean, I just got done knocking doors and I heard all over the city people complaining about ORVs driving on roads everywhere. Um, so I have expressed my concern, LPD has expressed their concern, Councilwoman Wood um, she and I had a conversation. I believe she's going to be bringing something to council. Thank you, Councilwoman. Um, so we'll continue to push that. It's my understanding that Del High, uh, that Delta Township um, has been exempted. Um, so I've requested certainly that same exemption, but I'm also concerned that 
people just don't know the difference between an Eaton County Road and Ingham County Road, and they're going to end up putting using their ORVs on our roads, and it'll just cause more problems. So I have expressed my concern. I do it here publicly, and I appreciate your interest, Councilwoman, and that this will come before our City Council. Um, on a more positive note, I want to congratulate Neva Lees. They had a great ribbon cutting over the weekend, new plant store right next to the Mikey 23 shop on Kalamazoo. Um, we also had a good groundbreaking for the Lansing Shuffle, which is, is coming in the spring, um, right on the riverfront downtown. Um, I want to congratulate a few people. Uh, I think she's watching. Uh, Judge Alderson, uh, who has uh, retired, had a wonderful retirement party. Um, City Hall just isn't the same without you, Judge, but, uh, but I wish you the best of luck as you move on to your next adventure. Um, I want to congratulate Yvette Collins, for those who know her with AT&T. Um, and you all know her because she's everywhere in our community. She's on like three boards. Um, she's retiring, uh, so we'll be attending her retirement party, but I want to congratulate her. Um, a few events coming up. We have our mo mobile food distribution this Saturday morning. Um, I believe it is at Cristo Rey uh, on Miller Road. Um, registration time is 7 a.m. for vehicles to line up, and distribution is from 9 to 11 or until the food runs out. So please share the, uh, the word to anyone of need. Um, and then we've got uh, Friday the 14th is our HRCS MLK event that we have every year. This year it will be virtual. Um, so we're looking forward to that. Um, we have a participatory budget night from 6.30 to 7.30, which was targeted for the second ward, for uh, Councilman Garza in the second ward. It was going to be in person, um, but unfortunately we're moving it virtual due to COVID preparation. Um, there are a few events that, that uh, our neighborhoods department is working on. They're looking at January 21st to do ice skating in the plaza. Um, I believe it's 6.30 to, um, I have 6.30 to 8.30 written down. That could be wrong. Um, skates are available on a first come, first serve basis. Uh, they're going to have hot cocoa and music provided. Um, and then on February 2nd is snow tubing at Hawk Island. Uh, again, pre-registration is needed. It's in the afternoon, I believe, but there's no school that day, is my understanding. So some cool outdoor events downtown and, and in um, South Lansing uh, through our Neighborhoods Department. And as a reminder, February 4th, the Neighborhood Grant application and program applications are due 5 p.m. So for all the neighborhood groups out there, please apply for the money that we have set aside for you and for your neighborhood, um, for neighborhood and civic organizations. And then finally, uh, February 16th will be our uh, next Neighborhood Resource Summit, which will be in the fourth ward. Um, we're targeting it for Let's Community Center from 6 to 8 p.m. for Councilman Jackson, who stepped away, um, and hopefully we'll be able to do that in person, but we will adjust if we need it, need due to COVID. Um, sorry to take so much time, Mr. President, but thank you. Not a, not a problem. Thank you, Mayor Shore. Okay, we do have a show cause hearing tonight uh, in consideration of orders to make safe or demolish to the owners of property located at 4108 Deerfield Avenue. Councilman Garza. Thank you, Council President. So yes, uh, show cause hearing, it's at 4108 Deerfield Avenue. That is lot 118, Pleasant Subdivision number one. There was a, a demolition board meeting date of May 27, 2021. And they had an order to make safe or demolish by August 22nd of 2021. There's been no uh, current permit activity on that property. Uh, the SEV value is 29,400 uh, with uh, building value at $48,073. With that, I will move the show cause hearing. We do have one speaker uh, signed up on the show cause hearing, and that is Brenda Titus. Please come to the mic. You have three minutes. Nope, I'm nope. sorry. The, oh. the mic. Podium. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. At the lectern. All right. Um, yeah. So um, the property, as of this Thursday, we have a ice there to finish up. There you go. Yeah, to finish up the heating, and then the plumber will get in there for one hour, and those two will be able to get their inspections and then right after that the framer will get the inspection like within the next week or two and then after that the insulator is all set I called him today and he's ready and then the drywalling and then the um, trim and the floors so and the cabinets will be all set I would say within this month or so 
and and that's basically it. It's just been a process. I, my husband passed away three, well, um, about three years ago, and um, I've had to do this all in cash. Um, he had a long illness, three years of uh, cancer treatments, and it's just been a process. So that's it. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Vice President Wood. Um, this will uh, be referred back to public safety, but um, ma'am, the, the next process for this is to come to the public safety meeting on uh, January 20th at 4 p.m. Um, and Ms. Boak is out in the lobby area and she can give you the information um, so that you can make this presentation to the committee and uh, we will have code compliance there to tell us where the progress is. All right, thank you. Okay, we are to the referral of the show cause hearing. Public safety. Okay, we are to public comment on legislative matters. Um, and as I indicated, that is items uh, five through 20 on the agenda. And uh, the president has also authorized item 24 uh, to be um, under legislative matters. And uh, I did neglect to mention that the two late items uh, dealing with the vacancy, uh, the acceptance of the resignation and the process for filling the vacancy are also eligible for discussion under legislative matters as they are going to be acted on tonight. Um, we do have a number of public hearings that I will read into the record. Number one, Obsolete Property Rehabilitation Act District for 1102 South Washington Avenue for Rio Ventures, LLC. Uh, we have an Obsolete Property Rehabilitation Act District for 224 South Washington Square, filed by 1247 Center Street, LLC. We have a special land use permit, uh, SLU 1 of 2021, 611 North Butler, to allow for the construction of a surface parking lot in the RB, R6B Urban Detached Residential Zoning District. Uh, we have an amendment to chapter 1218 to conform to the Soil Erosion and Sedimentation Control Act, Michigan codified law. And we have an amendment to chapter 890 poverty exemption guidelines reform. Uh, on the first public hearing, sorry, Councilwoman Spitzley. Thank you, Mr. President. The, the first scheduled public uh, hearing is on um, the Obsolete Property Rehabilitation Act, the OPRA, and this is for um, 224 South, I'm sorry, it's not for 224 South Washington, I'm on the wrong one. It's for, um, I think it's 112, but I'm sorry, just give me a minute here. It's for um, 1102 South Washington Avenue. Um, this is a building um, that was constructed in and about 1925. Um, uh, our city assessor has uh, provided us with a recommendation that the property is suffering from functional obsolescence due to the size configuration and lack of interior heating, plumbing, and previous use. Um, so that's why that's up for um, for a public hearing and I will move that resolution. Am I moving it? It's just, no, just we're just, yeah, so that's, fact, yeah. Two, six, seven, and eight, yeah, okay. The next one is, um, is for um, a public hearing for um, the same thing, the Obsolete Property Rehabilitation Act um, for 224 South Washington Square, Lansing, Michigan. Um, it's it's the same thing. It's been determined by you know our city assessor that um, the building is, as as it is is functionally obsolete. What the what this designation does though is allow for the owners of this real property within this district, if it is established, to apply for an abatement of certain property taxes for improvements to their property located within the district. And number. Number seven is the consideration of the special land per permit use on 611 North Butler 
to allow for the construction of a surface parking lot in the R-6B Urban Detached Residential Zoning District. Um, we have received comment from the Genesee uh, neighborhood and also comments from um, Aaron Williams, A.L. Williams Consulting LLC, which I would like to be part of the record. Um, Mr. Williams is the owner of the property um, and the Genesee uh, neighborhood has also uh, provided public comment against the um, special land use. Appreciate that. And last but not least, number eight. Um, this is uh, to amend Chapter 1218 to conform to the Soil Erosion and Sedimentation Control Act. Um, I, I wasn't here on that day, but I know that it is a um, requirement by EGLE, and so we are complying with the requirement from the State Environmental Agency for that. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, and to the issue of amendments to Chapter 890, Mr. Spadafore. Yeah, two, uh, similarly, as Council Member Spitzley just mentioned, this is a reflection of change of state law. We're amending Chapter 890, which deals with poverty exemption guidelines. Um, and this is some reforms that were done back in 2020. We heard a little bit about these in December, I think the 13th from Ms. Fishman, um, about the bill, about the ordinance rather, in Committee of the Whole. It changes the poverty exemption guidelines and provides a 100% exemption for all applicants that are seniors on fixed incomes and individuals with disabilities. Further, the change would require the review of all property owners, not just the applicant, as is the current practice. So we're basically aligning uh, city law to state laws that changed in 2020. Thank you so much. Clerk Swift. Okay, our first speaker is Hazel Bathia, followed by Aaron Williams. Good afternoon to each and every one of you. I sit there, my glass is fogged up, so being the age I am, I guess I can read this. <laughs> okay. Our neighborhood does not support this request. As much as, as much as support small business, we believe there are other opinions to this biz for this business. Directly behind the business requiring the permit is an unused parking lot. Across the street is another parking lot. We believe that the business should work with each property owner to accomplish these ne their needs. Our neighborhood has been struggling for many years to actively balance <clears throat> this and requ require, request does not go. This request is not human with the character of our neighborhood. We believe the decision could make a permanent effect on our neighborhood, and we worked so hard to improve over the past, the past years. We ask that you review the pictures and understand our concerns. Please support us by voting no and helping to improve our community. Do not vote yes, or you will be condemning our neighborhood. And I'm quite sure all of you there have pictures of the property that we're talking about. So I would appreciate it if you would vote no on this. There's other properties that can be used better than what they're asking for now. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have Aaron Williams, followed by Chuck Hallman. Good evening, Mr. President and Council. I'm Aaron Williams, and I'm the owner of A.L. Williams Consulting, and I am requesting consideration for my special land permit use of 611 North Butler, which is currently a vacant lot, and I'd like to use that uh, permit or request to utilize that vacant lot as a parking uh, area. I had my comments here. Bear with me. <clears throat> I own the uh, parking lot at uh, 609 North Butler, which is just north of 611. Uh, North Butler, 
and my intent is to combine the uh, 611 parking lot along with the 609 uh, vacant lot and make it one parking lot for additional parking for uh, the employees and also for the customers in that area. <clears throat> the proposed parking lot will not necessarily change the essential character of the area. It is merely intended to provide 10 additional parking spaces for existing use. If the special land use permit is approved, I will install a six foot obake fence on the south and west property lines. This is uh, for the 611 vacant lot. <clears throat> and I will desig designate a drive aisle located along the south property line so that the roller parking on the subject property will be north of the drive and hence all parked vehicles will be facing north as to not obstruct the uh, or interfere with the neighbors in terms of uh, traffic as well as uh, headlights glare coming from vehicles. And I would also uh, will line the front of the parking area with a five foot landscape buffer strip between the street and the parking area. <clears throat> and I also uh, will we'll have a civil engineer prepare a, a site plan, which would include storm water management plan and submit for review. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Our next speaker is Chuck Hallman, followed by Loretta Stanaway. Hello, I'm uh, Chuck Hallman. I live at 1014 West Lapeer, which is around the corner from the property. Uh, Hazel, which is our president of the Genesee Neighborhood Association, I'm the vice president. Uh, a few other opinions on this. The 900 block of West Saginaw, on the even side, there's a city-owned parking lot behind that that has 93 spaces. And as I drove through there today, there was three places being used. And the property line on the south side of the property, where the existing fence is now, if he puts that lot in and still puts another fence up, it's going to be within probably five to six feet of that house that's sitting there. So yes, he might put a fence up, which will keep the headlights out, but it's not going to keep the noise out. So we'd like to, this property is also right now being used as a community garden. We need our green spaces. We don't need any more blacktop. So I'm saying to please vote no on this. Thank you. Next we have Loretta Stanaway, followed by Tony Hereford. couple of different things tonight. Uh, one is the setting of the public hearing for the special land use permit for Wise Road for a substation for BWL. And there's very little documentation that I could come up with online for that. So I don't know exactly what they have in mind. I would just caution you based on the experience we had with Scott Park and the Sunken Gardens and you know that whole history. So my advice is to just be very, very cautious, ask hard questions, make sure you touch base with the residents around that area and listen most to the residents and what they want and least to the Board of Water and Light and what they tell you they need because the two usually are gonna be in conflict and your job is not to represent the board, it's to represent the neighbors. Uh, second, on the grant acceptance of the Michigan National Trust Fund for the Parks and Rec, Three of the four look to me like very good uses of park millage or city money or state money or wherever it's coming from. I do question though why we would use $300,000 of that money 
to put in a park for McLaren Hospital. I would think that's something they should put in for themselves out of their own pockets. And then on the um, lighting issue at Regent and Bancroft Park, I heard what Mr. Kishinsky had to say and I understand where he's coming from. I hope he also understands where the public is coming from and that is to say that in spite of the rules that the parks close at dawn to dusk, people use those parks at night in the dark constantly, walking themselves, getting to and from late night or early morning jobs, walking their dogs, rollerblading, whatever it might be. We know from experience that there is a lot of traffic in and out of the river trail at night. There's a lot of traffic in and out of the cemeteries, even though they're gated. Um, there are still people getting into the cemeteries at night and walking and doing other things. So be realizing <clears throat> that when you take away those lights for people that are walking in Bancroft and walking in Regents or taking their dogs for a stroll or whatever it might be, you are impacting public safety. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Tony Hereford followed by Nancy Malo. Good evening. Um, my name is Tony Hereford. Uh, my office location is 1201 South Washington Avenue, Lansing, Michigan, 48910. Um, I'm the, the project manager representing the BWL's Y substation project that Loretta just mentioned. Um, it's on the agenda uh, later this evening, number 18, to set the public hearing date for the special land use. Um, we were asked just to provide a brief summary of the project tonight. Uh, it is a proposed new substation to replace an existing substation. Um, the location is on Pleasant Grove, um, south of Jolly Road, um, directly south of Benjamin Davis Park, if you're familiar with the area. Um, the benefit for the substation is one, to replace the old substation, but also it provides benefit to us um, helping us move forward in our Lansing Energy Tomorrow program. Um, the Lansing Energy Tomorrow program is a major electric uh, modernization program uh, to upgrade and replace aging infrastructure with new, more uh, energy efficient, reliable uh, assets. Um, we're doing our best to keep everyone informed about the project. Um, we do have our website, lbwl.com, that does provide some information. We also have a phone number that people can call, so that's 517-702-6077. And then we also have a specific email address for people, um, which is Lansing Energy Tomorrow, all one word, um, at lbwl.com. Um, in addition, Loretta, you mentioned public information not being available. The there is a packet that went to the planning board of review. I think that's probably the best um, available information if the public is seeking it. It has our full uh, planning board submittal in there that is available for download. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Nancy Malo followed by Evan Goodman. President Hussein, Vice President Wood, Council, Mayor Shore. Um, I am here in regards to the removal of the lights within Bancroft and mainly Bancroft, but at Regent Park. I understand what the park director is saying. However, this is a huge safety issue. Yes, we have an ordinance that says you're not supposed to be in the park after dark. But as you know, many, many people use the park at, at night. When they get out of work, they're walking their dogs, they're taking their kids for a walk. Right now, when we're dealing with a virus and people are trying to get out and breathe the fresh air, these lights are needed. They're needed for the safety. They're needed for the safety for our first responders. If they get a call, they need to be able to see what is going on in the, in the parks. So I, I'm asking you to, look, can we at least please stop any more removal? I know this is gonna be referred to um, public safety and thank you for that. Um, 
there needs to be better communication with the neighborhoods, the friends of, of the parks, whether it's Bancroft or any other park. I understand, I'm, I'm not even sure if there was any discussion with the parks board. I understand also that, that the mayor wasn't aware of, of any of this and, and after talking with some of the council members, you weren't aware either. We need to have transparency and, and we need to be able to have the access to our parks in a safe manner. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Evan Goodman followed by Ryan Cost. Hello, Council. Thank you for having me up here. My name is Evan Goodman. I'm a citizen of the city. I'm calling, I'm speaking here on behalf of the concern about the lights removal at Bancroft Park. As we all know, there was no prior announcement of this. This is something that belongs to the public. This is something that requires the involvement and the comment of the public, as we see that did not happen. And I believe that the public safety matters were addressed very nicely in the people before me. It's the great thing to be concerned about. We have a park that has lights in it, or it had lights in it. It made for a safe outdoor space where people could go and recreate and do that all times of the day, regardless of when with the, whenever the park closes, especially during the age of COVID where we need to have more facilities open. 24-hour gyms aren't available at the moment. Those lights were a way people could get exercise over the course of the night. I think that we need to keep all this in account too. Additionally, there is concern that changes are happening to parks that have not involved the approval of the citizens, and we want to ensure that we keep these parks available for everyone, for the whole city, and that we can all access them and use them and discover their great potential and be involved with it too. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Ryan Cost, followed by Kendra Lasoski. Hi, everybody. I am uh, Ryan Cost. I'm speaking about the lighting situation at Bancroft Park um, and Regent Park since it was brought up. Um, I, had a sp I had a speech, that's not me, so I'm gonna play this by my heart. Um, so Regent Park, I reported the light in the back of that uh, late summer this, this summer. It was burnout, it was bad. I reported the light after I removed 35 used needles it took me almost a week to get all of the trash out of that park that had been dumped. And I was told that there's no way that someone would dump garbage in there because it's so thick. And that's the plan is to let it grow over. I can tell you, as I had to cut through that thicket, people get back there, they use drugs, and I'm not, I'm not judging anyone, um, and they leave that there, and our kids come to those parks and they play. And that is not safe for our kids Having a light there deters that kind of activity. As far as Bancroft Park goes, um, it was stated that those lights, uh, power lines, caused an issue. It was going to be an issue. Um, those lights have been there since 1927. I have the news article in my pocket from 1927 when they were initially installed. They were redone with WAP funds in 1938. Nearly a hundred years those have been there in a forest with no issues on those electrical lines until now. And it was done without, I'm not a politician, so to answer the question that Vice President Wood asked, was LPD a part of the discussion when that was removed? The answer is no, they weren't because I didn't hear an answer out of the Parks and Recs director when he, when you asked that question, I heard a lot of, well, they, I talked to him about this part of the neighborhood. That is, is concerning. I sat back there the first night that those lights had been taken out. There was a person, a girl that was walking, looking for lights with her dog. She was a regular jogger. I had seen her several times before. Nearly got hit in the parking lot because Yes, they took every light out of there. There was not one light. It was pitch dark. This is not the Lansing that we all love. And I know we all love Lansing. My heart is with Lansing always. Um, and for a walkable community that constantly is being talked about, I have seen that in action over in Potter Walsh, a walkable community. When you light it up, you fix up the park, you make citizens proud of where they live, I don't understand why we would take away from our parks 
that we have now, taking away special things that have been there for a very long time. Our parks are worth fighting for. A threat to one park is a threat to all. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Kendra Lasoski, followed by Dwight Washington. Hello and good evening. Uh, I first want to say that I do take a lot of pride in Lansing and its community and our parks here. This is regarding the light issue. Um, I feel like with all the violence and crime happening in Lansing right now, if lights are broken, we should spend the money to fix them and make it safe for our residents here in Lansing. I don't feel like we are doing everything that we can to ensure the safety of our residents and I do not want to lose any more parks in Lansing. Um, a lot of people that live in Lansing do live and take pride in Lansing because of our parks and how beautiful they are. Um, and I would also like to necessitate that changes being made to our parks do follow the proper processes that are in place for those changes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and our final speaker for this section is Dwight Washington. Good evening, City Council. I'm Dwight Washington from um, Bath Township, uh, Clinton County. And uh, it's been a long time since I've been here with the pandemic. And uh, But I think that there's been a long history where I've been here. And it's just really kind of like brought about some of the perspective of being a county or a uh, city council member. And I remember the only person who was still here from when I first started was Council Member Wood. And it just shows just how long it's been. But I've also seen a, a great diversity in the board, uh, the council. And that's really nice to see. I remember when it was pretty much all white males and with the exception of Council Wood. But you know, through there, there was a time when there was, uh, if I remember correctly, where it was all women and that was, uh, leaving a big footprint for all of you gentlemen to follow and I hope that you uh, are able to deliver as well as they did. My reason for being here today though is because I am a strong park advocate and one of the things that I found particularly during this COVID was that Lansing's got a really rich park system and it's, it is something to be proud of and, and sometimes it's overlooked when we think about where you're going to go do have some fun and it's so easy to look to the Great Lakes and to go up north, but it's, uh, there's some treasures here in Lans the city of Lansing that really ought to be preserved and remembered. And Bancroft Park is one of those. And there's a great deal of concern because the city has lost parks in the past. And that concern has made people really um, emotional and sensitive to losing more parks th that have been with us through you know, pretty much the history of Lansing. Uh, when Ari Olds decided to like make a, uh, a, a greenway for the city so that peop the public, not private citizens with money, but the public without money can just go and benefit from these natural resources, the exercise that goes with it, and even the social connections that are built with the parks. And again, that's something to be preserved. And what I, what I, what I was hearing as a park, concerned park citizen is that we were going to lose this park and others, and that there was no um, involvement with the community and I just want to say that involvement with the community is so important and to be in, in front of this and create a narrative that Lansing does care for and protects the parks it's been a campaign issue that people have gone to again and again and it's something that should be honored and respected and uh, with the last thing I'd like to say is that you know with regards to lights out there right now there's a group of us who are out skiing and with the tree with the leaves gone, it's like it's there is visibility you can see, but I'm kind of concerned about when the summer comes and when the over the foliage is there, you know, there there won't be as much light. And people are more likely to be out and about in the summer or in the spring when it's warmer out than it is in the winter. So, you know, when you do go take this to public safety, please consider that the seasons could make a difference in how people uh, respond. Thank you. Thank you, and that was our final speaker. So we are to the referral of the public hearings, item five, the Oprah District. Development of planning. Item six, the second Oprah District. Development of planning. Item seven, SLU one of 2021. Development of planning. Item eight, the soil erosion ordinance. Development of planning. And item nine, the poverty exemption ordinance. Committee of the whole. 
Okay, we are going to pull forward. Uh, we have a couple of appointments, so we we'll move next to the appointment of Holly Seabury to the Elected Officers Compensation Commission. Vice President Wood. Uh, thank you, uh, President Hussein. Um, we have an appointment of Holly Seabury uh, for an at-large member of the Elected Compensation uh, Commission for a term that expires October 1st, 2023. And with that, I would move the resolution and uh, upon uh, approval, if she could come down for her swearing in. So with that, I move the resolution. There's a motion on the floor. Further discussion? Seeing and hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Come on down. <laughs> All right, if you could raise your right hand and repeat after me, I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Michigan. And the Constitution of the State of Michigan. That I will faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. Of the Office of. Of the Office of. Elected Officers Compensation elected officers compensation commission according to the best of my abilities according to the best of my abilities all right congratulations thank you and we are to the appointment of lori fuller vice president wood uh, thank you uh president hussein uh, before us, we have the appointment of Lori Fuller as a member of the Board of Review for a term that will expire January 31st, 2023. And um, after passage, if she could come forward for her swearing in. Uh, those in, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, they, is that a motion? Yes. All right, there's a motion on the floor. Is there further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Come on down. Okay. You could raise your right hand and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Michigan. And the Constitution of the State of Michigan. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And I will faithfully discharge the duties. Of the office of the Board of Review member. Of the Office of Board of Review member. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. All right, congratulations. Thank you. All right, that does bring us to the consent agenda. Uh, before I entertain a motion, are there other items? We only have three items left. Are there items that folks would like to have removed from the consent agenda? Seeing none, Councilwoman. Oh, I am so sorry. You know what, we actually have to backtrack. Let me go back to, um, we're actually at ordinances for passage. Um, Vice President Wood. Um, I would move um, the ordinance, uh, well, it's gotta be read into the record. Yeah. So that's. Record. I'm trying to be in two places at once. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long one, go ahead. <laughs> We have an ordinance of the City of Lansing, Michigan, readopting the codified ordinances of the City of Lansing. It is read a second time by its title. The ordinance was reported from the Committee of the Whole and is on the order of immediate passage. Vice President. Thank you. With that, I would move um, the readoption of the codified ordinances. And again, this is a process um, that we are doing yearly to make sure that all the ordinances um, that um, are in a 10-year cycle, are kept up and, and as part of that. So I would move the ordinance. There is a motion on the floor. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, Clerk Swope, would you take the roll, please? On the ordinance, Council Member Brown. Uh, that, that looks like a yes, a thumbs up. Yes. Council Member Garza. Yes. Council Member Hussein. Yes. Councilmember Jackson? Yes. Councilmember Spadafore? Yes. Councilmember Spitzley? Yes. Councilmember Wood? Yes. Seven yeas, zero nays, the ordinance is adopted. 
I would have moved for immediate effect. There's a motion on the floor for immediate effect. Further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, now we are to the consent agenda, which is items uh, 13 through 15. All right, are there any items that folks would like uh, to see removed from the consent agenda? Seeing none, Vice President Wood. Um, thank you, uh, President Hussein. The um, items that we have on the consent ad agenda is a tribute and recognition of the Greater Lansing Area Holiday uh, Commission of Martin Luther King Jr. celebration, also a tribute and recognition of the City Human Relations and Community Service Martin Luther King Memorial Observance, and a uh, tribute and recognition uh, of Judge Louise Alterson's um, uh, retirement. So I would move uh, the consent agenda. There is a motion on the floor. Is there further discussion? Seeing and hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, we are to resolutions for action. Uh, we do have the two late items, uh, the acceptance of the resignation. Vice President Wood. Uh, I would move um, the resolution uh, for the acceptance of uh, former council member, well, I guess he's still a council member till we adopt it, council member Brian Betts' uh, resignation um, as of um, uh, January 7th, um, 2022. All right, with regards to the resolution uh, of resignation for Brandon Betts, um, is there further discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And we have the uh, replacement process resolution. Vice President Wood. Uh, thank you. At this time, I would um, move the resolution for the process. This would include um, applications that would be accepted starting um, Tuesday, January 11th through Friday, January 21st at 4 p.m. Uh, these will be done um, through the city clerk. Uh, those will be um, applications uh, will be looked at to make sure they meet the qualifications um, uh, per the charter. Then on Monday, uh, January 31st, the Committee of a Whole will be held at 6 p.m. and we'll start the interview, the um, applicants. Uh, then um, the council members uh, will select um, three candidates uh, for the next round of interviews. Um, then they, we will hold a uh, committee of a whole on February, Tuesday, February um, 1st, and um, have an interview process for um, the finalist, no longer than um, 30 minutes per uh, finalist. And then we will be having a, um, after the selection of the council member, uh, to the applicant to fill the council members um, position, we will hold a special uh, uh, council meeting on um, after the committee of a whole on February 1st. And um, at that point, we will uh, vote on um, the replacement. And then the, the replacement will be sworn in. So with that, I would move that resolution. There is a motion on the floor for the discussion. Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All, all those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, we have item 17, the Ad Hoc Committee on Housing and Resident Safety. Sure, I'm gonna go ahead and pass the gavel and wait to be recognized. President Hussein. Sure, I appreciate it. Um, so council leadership has met and we feel an absolute urgency uh, in uh, really committing and taking a look at housing issues uh, really across the city of Lansing. Um, I can recall back uh, two years ago, uh, it was actually at our organizational meeting in 2020, uh, and it was precipitated by a conversation um, uh, set it on pink tags going up on Autumn's Ridge. And I remember at the time, oops, sorry. I remember at the time, uh, Councilwoman Spitzley, I thought spoke uh, quite eloquently uh, as to you know the, the myriad of issues, not just at that particular property, but really citywide when we were looking at 
uh, specifically our rental housing uh, that, that, that we were facing uh, in terms of our housing stock, in terms of ensuring uh, safe and appropriate housing for folks um, that you know, doesn't just make people comfortable essentially in their housing, but uh, helps them to um, ascend. Um, and under the leadership of uh, then President Spadafore, uh, we had actually established uh, a ad hoc on housing and resident safety. I thought we got off to um, what was a tremendous start, uh, and then unfortunately COVID hit, uh, and, and the actions of that particular uh, ad hoc committee were suspended. Uh, considering uh, the, the realities uh, of our housing stock before the pandemic, uh, the fact that things have been maybe exacerbated uh, to some point uh, by the uh, pandemic, um, we thought it was absolutely critical uh, to reestablish this particular uh, ad hoc committee. Uh, so with that being said, uh, the resolution in front of you um, contemplates uh, Councilman Spitzley as the chair uh, of the ad hoc committee on housing and resident safety, uh, contemplates Council Member Wood as the vice chair and Council Member Brown as a member. Um, it also calls on the ad hoc committee on housing and resident safety to report their findings and recommendations uh, to the committee of the whole no later than September 1st, 2022. Uh, and, and it also contemplates the ad hoc committee dissolving uh, by December 31st, 2022. Uh, so with that being said, uh, I would move the resolution. We have a motion on the resolution. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? At this point, I will pass the gavel back. Okay, we are to item 18, setting a hearing for SLU 2 of 2021. Councilwoman Spitzley. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, what we have before us is a um, to setting of a public hearing for Monday, February 14th for um, a special land use permit for the Lansing Board of Water and Light Wise Road substation. Um, they came before development and planning before the Christmas break and discussed the need to expand their substation there. Um, one of the things that we asked was why do you need a special land, excuse me, a special land permit permit for this. Um, it is because of the expansion and the property that they're expanding on um, and they need a special land use to um, facilitate the expansion. We did talk about um, making sure that they reached out to the public um, and they, they assured us that they did. Um, so with that, um, I would um, move the resolution to establish the public hearing to be set for Monday, February 14th, 2022. That motion? Yep. All right, there is a motion on the floor. Further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All, those, all those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, we have item 19, a grant acceptance. Vice President Wood. Uh, thank you. Um, President Hussein, uh, the resolution before us has uh, one, two, three, four different projects, and um, I'll speak to um, all four of the projects. The first one is um, a uh, grant for $300,000 along with the Capital Region Foundation supplying another $335,000. Uh, $1,000 uh, for the construction of an ADA accessible uh, restroom, a uh, river um, overlook deck at Luadato um, Park. This is the second phase of, um, uh, of this um, project. Uh, there will also be an eight foot wide concrete uh, sidewalk um, that will lead to the overdeck and the boardwalk. Um, there will also be uh, picnic tables, um, bike loops, and an art structure um, in that um, area. The next um, grant is for um, $988,600. Um, um, dollars and this is uh, this grant um, 300,000 of this um, is um, uh, for goods and services this will be a loop that will extend um, the in the current pathway and the Bear Lake through Fenner Nature Center 
and um, this will create a loop in that area that will extend um, from McGuire Park to um, Jolly and Aurelius. Uh, the city's match in this is $688,600, so the grant that we are approving is for $300,000. The um, next grant that we have um, for um, approval is in the amount of $971,000. Um, the grant is for $300,000. There's a city match of $671,000. Uh, this grant um, will also be receiving uh, from funds from Ingham County uh, Trails. Uh, this will go from the Corporate Research Park uh, development from uh, Bear Lake and will attach to McLaren and the Corporate Park. And this, again, is a trail process that will go around um, McLaren. This is not for a um, garden or a playground or anything else. It, it's part of the trail system. Um, we did ask and um, encourage the parks director uh, to meet with McLaren and see, uh, since this is something that could be utilized by their employees, uh, to see if they would be amenable to help in the funding uh, for this. Um, and then lastly, um, we have a grant for um, $200,000, $150,000 of that is the grant. The uh, $50,000 that um, is part of uh, the sponsorship is coming from the Knudsen family. Um, this was um, June. Uh, Knudsen uh, left a memorial fund uh, to the park system to help improve Francis uh, Park Rose Garden. This will allow uh, for the construction of ADA accessible sidewalk and ramp to the Rose Garden and other upgrades um, to the garden. So with that, I would move um, these grants. Here is a motion on the floor for the discussion. Councilwoman Spitzley. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, just confirming um, for the um, Corporate Research Park Path Development Project that that is property that is owned by the City of Lansing? Or in, how, what is our ownership with that? This would be part of the river, the river trail. It would, it would be what we own. So it is not McLaren owned property? No. Okay, I just wanted to be clear because I think that was part of public comment. So we want to be clear yeah. that it is city owned property and not property owned by McLaren. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All, all those opposed, same sign. Motion carried. And our final action item tonight is a item 20 uh, workers' compensation claim. And once again, Vice President Wood. Uh, thank you, uh, President Hussein. Uh, this is a workers' comp settlement negotiation. It would be for $150,441. Uh, this is for a former employee that uh, qualified for duty disability and Social Security disability. Uh, the um, law department uh, working with the human resources um, supports uh, this settlement and this would um, then uh, uh, release uh, the city from all past, present, and future claims against the city. So with their recommendations and the recommendation of Ways and Means, we move the resolution. All right, there is a motion on the floor for the discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, we are to speaker registration for public comment on city government related matters. If there's anyone uh, wishes to speak tonight, uh, you do have another opportunity by completing a yellow form in the next uh, one minute or so. Uh, and in the meantime, we're to reports of city officers, boards, and commission. Vice President Wood. Um, at this time, I would move that um, all uh, reports from city officers, boards and commissions and communications and other uh, uh, related matters be um, considered uh, read in full and the proper referrals be made by you, Mr. President. There is a motion on the floor for the discussion. 
Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. <clears throat> Sorry, passes. Okay, we have items from the city clerk, minutes of the boards and commissions. Place on file. Items from the mayor, uh, setting a public hearing for act one of 2022. Development and planning. And the related action item for act one of 2022. Development and planning. Communications and petitions, uh, communication from Nancy Mailer regarding the removal of lights at Bancroft and Regent Parks. Public safety. And we are to remarks by council members. Do we have any other uh, council remarks? Councilman Jackson. Thank you. I just wanted to um, double down on the warming center conversation. Um, I don't know what the criteria is, and it sounds like you don't exactly know either, but we all know that it's freezing, freezing cold, and there's really no... Um, I mean, not having staff, I understand there's logistical problems, but um, it's important enough that we should find a solution. I know there's certain places open, but if there's anything the city can do to increase capacity and get more people inside, I think we should do it. City Hall has a lobby that's connected to a police station, and there's, I don't know, an on-call employee, at least one. It seems like um, we should find solutions. and. I don't think anybody's gonna let us, not that we want to, relax unless there is something in place. And I know this happened last year, possibly the year before, and you know, I don't know what it's gonna take, but we should find all solutions possible. Thank you. Other remarks by council members? Thank you. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I totally missed you. It's all right. Council Just to Mr. follow up really quick on that, um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna put my mask on, I was drinking. Just to follow up really quick on that, we just got a cold weather alert that it's gonna be wind chill of 10 below tonight. So it's gonna be cold. Everybody please take appropriate care if you can to be as warm as possible. Thanks. Thank you. All right, um, remarks by the mayor. Mayor Shore. Okay, we are to public comment on city government related matters. We have Kyle Richard. Thank you everyone for being here tonight. Uh, I'm here to speak on the vacancy in the first ward. Um, I don't live in the first ward, I live in the fourth ward, but if this council is gonna appoint a successor, then this is uh, definitely a citywide decision. Um, one name that I've heard floated, not necessarily here tonight, but that I've heard floated is Jody Washington. Um, and I don't know Jody personally, but in December of 2020, I found myself uh, around a campfire over in the back 40, the vacant lot, corner of Larch and Shiawassee. And uh, I had heard through my networks that they were running low on firewood and a big storm was coming in and I had some dry firewood and so I brought it out there. Uh, while I was there, they shared with me that Jody Washington and a crew of a couple, couple others uh, showed up to the back 40 and we're basically walking around like they own the place, uh, essentially playing White Knight for the Eyed Company. Um, keep in mind, this is a time when Jody Washington is not a member of this body. This is Jody just moving around as a private citizen, going and talking to uh, unhoused neighbors in a way that um, they described to me as uh, she talked down to us. She talked down to us, that's what they, that's what they said to me. Um, and I don't really think that anyone who talks to unhoused people in our city in a way that makes them feel less than, in a way that makes them feel like they're being spoken down to, uh, has any place uh, in this body. Uh, and so I would ask council uh, during this process as you're looking at uh, potential replacements for the first ward seat uh, to uh, remove Jody Washington from your consideration. Thank you. And that was our final speaker. All right, with no other business before the body, we are adjourned at 8.50.